Hey there friends, welcome back for another scrapbookpal.com video. This is Cassie Trask and I'm super excited to be guesting today. We are going to be making a slimline card, so let's talk about what we're using. We have the My Favorite Things Good Vibes Only stamp set. Love all these sentiments in there, they're so fabulous. And then we have the Color Blast die by My Favorite Things. And it just pairs perfectly, so you can make a rainbow and that's what we are going to be doing. So I have an array of distress oxide inks and we are starting out by doing some ink blending. I'm going to show this doubled up speed but we're going to quadruple the speed here in a second just because it's a lot of ink blending. Um, this first color that I'm using is Candied Apple and all of the cardstock that I'm using is some watercolor cardstock that I have trimmed down to be the same size as a slimline card which uh, for me is three and a half inches by eight and a half inches. Our next color is one of the new colors. We have some Crackling Campfire and I'm just using some mini or the ink blending tools and just blending that all over the front of that. The next color is some mustard seed. And I do want to point out that I am not concerned about a perfect blend. The reason I'm not concerned is because I plan to do a little bit to these panels. I'm going to do a little extra. So this next color is our Rustic Wilderness. That's another new color. And I'll show you that obviously my, my blending did not turn out perfect with this one. And I'm, I'm totally okay with that. My sponge ended up bunching up somehow. I guess I was going a little crazy with the blending and it bunched up. But again, I'm not concerned that that is not a perfect blend. Our next color is the Salty Ocean. Love this color. It's such a vibrant blue. And actually, all these colors together are just so pretty. In fact, that was half the fun, was just picking the colors that I would have next to each other. And our final color for our rainbow is going to be some Seedless Preserves, another classic color that I just adore. So I put all these colors together, and they I just feel like they make magic. So when we're finished blending, we'll clean up our mess, we'll put our sponges away because we won't need those anymore, and then we're going to do some splatter. So I'm going to grab my Distress Sprayer and I'm going to splatter water all over these backgrounds. This is why it's not that big of a deal that I didn't get a perfect blend on most of these. And I'm going very liberal with my splatter. And then I'll take a microfiber cloth and pull up the extra and then set those off to the side to dry. And then we'll do our final three colors. It's so fun to see them all together, honestly. Do a little bit of splatter, spray, trying to get big droplets, little droplets. Just want a lot of texture for this background or for these panels. And then again, the microfiber cloth to pull up the excess water. Now I want to, and I have this sped up four times as well, I'm going to splatter, splatter, splatter a bunch of Lawn Fawn Liquid Stardust all over this background. It doesn't look like much right now, but I'm going to hold this one up to the, to the light for you. And then you'll be able to see just how absolutely stunning that is. And I'm going to do that to all six of those panels. So what you see is a ton of gorgeous shimmery splatter all over that. And then with the water droplets, um, a perfect blend just really wasn't a concern. So we'll just keep splattering. And I get pretty liberal with a lot of them, especially with this one, because I didn't have a very good blend at all. And then grab out the next, the mustard seed, splatter, splatter, splatter. And I have to say that the amount of visual texture that you get from the water droplets and the Lawn Fawn Liquid Stardust that's splattered all over these backgrounds just is incredible. And um, I think that's just one of the fun things for me is how messy you can get and how, how much visual texture you can add to something. So let's put all these panels up on the screen for you so you can take a look at how absolutely stunning they are, especially when the light hits them. And now we're going to do some die cutting. So I'm going to die cut the rainbow on here twice. I'm going to do it this way and then I'll flip it and do it the other way. And you'll notice I'm not using the full length of the die. That is okay. But I do want to point out that uh, I'm not sure if you noticed, I did use a scrap piece of paper. So I used some computer paper. What I did is I stuck down my cardstock, I stuck down my die, and then I put that scrap paper on top. And the reason for doing that is we used Distress Oxide ink and we also used this Liquid Stardust. And those have a tendency to transfer. And I don't want those transferring onto any of my plates. So I decided to use that um, scrap paper. And I actually used the same one for each piece. It really wasn't a big deal and I didn't have any transfer onto each other. But that piece of scrap paper, and I'll show you here in a second, will absorb whatever excess. So you'll see 
that would have been on my plate had I not used it. So we'll go ahead and cut all those out twice and now we're going to cut down our panel. So I'm cutting a four inch panel off of this regular eight and a half by 11 piece cardstock and then I'll trim this down to three and a half inches. So that will be my card panel and then now I have the card base set off to the side. So that was a seven inch by eight and a half inch card base. And now I'm just going to arrange the rainbow pieces that I need onto our slimline card panel. So I'm just grabbing each of the pieces that I need from each of the colors. And this takes a little bit of time, but what I will end up with is a lot of excess pieces and I will save all of those because I can use those to make other cards. I could have come out of here with a bunch of different cards um, using the same colors, just in different orders. And yeah, it would have been a super easy process. So now that I've got all that ready to go, I'm going to use my Nouveau Deluxe Liquid Adhesive and I'll just one by one glue each of those little rainbow pieces down. So at this point in the process I hadn't decided yet if I wanted this to be a horizontal or a vertical card design. But here you can see how much uh, how big that die actually is and how much I actually cut for my slimline. This would be great on an A2 size card and it would fill up from top to bottom which is nice. So then I'll just glue the rest of these pieces down. And then once all of those are glued on there, we'll have two beautiful rainbows. Imagine doing this in different colors. You wouldn't have to do it in rainbow. You could use a couple different colors or as many colors as you wanted, whatever variety um, and whatever order. And you'd have really neat designs on your cards. But the rainbow, rainbow always has my heart. So now I'm gonna stamp out my sentiment and it's coming from, again, that Good Vibes Only stamp set by My Favorite Things. I'm gonna ink that up with some black ink, stamp that down using my, the door of my Misty, and then I'll set that off to the side and I'll get my card base ready to go. So again, this measures seven inches by eight and a half inches and I'm scoring it at three and a half inches. And I always like to add a little something to the inside of my card and because I have so many extra pieces, I am going to take some washi tape and I'm going to glue or tape down, temporarily adhere these to each other in this way. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to line it up just perfect at the top. And this I found was the best way to just temporarily, temporarily adhere them together before I glued it to the top. And you'll see why, because I want it to mesh entirely at the very top of that card. So I'll add one more piece. And then I'm going to just kind of measure where I want that. And then I'll use some liquid glue and adhere this down to the top of the card. Now I'm also using a T roller because I have a tendency to not get things very straight. And you'll see why here in a bit. <laughs> so using that same liquid glue, I'll adhere this down. And then our next step is to grab out the guillotine trimmer because we have to trim off the excess. You could just use scissors, but I find that the guillotine trimmer works really well in these instances. So I'll just pull that out and line that up right along that edge, close the guillotine trimmer, and then we'll have that excess pieces. Now here I'm going to stamp out one more sentiment from that Good Vibes Only stamp set. And then we'll close our card because the inside is done. And now I'll take some liquid glue and adhere down our panel to our card base. And then I need to trim down my sentiment a little bit. And so I'll use the guillotine trimmer one more time just to trim this down. And then I'm gonna grab out some scrapbook adhesive 3D foam squares and I'll just put those all over that back. This will just add a little bit of extra dimension to our card. So I'll peel off all of the release paper and grab out that T ruler again and see if I can get this on straight. <laughs> the T ruler is supposed to help. You just actually have to use it right. And I didn't. <laughs> so mine's on crooked. And thankfully I didn't push down too hard. So I'm able to kind of manipulate that just a little bit. And that is going to finish off our card for today, folks. I sure hope that you enjoyed this process with me. If you liked this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Thank you for stopping by scrapbookpal.com and we will see you very soon in another video. Bye everyone.